Hello everyone, welcome back to Magic Treehouse, Dinosaurs Before Dark. I'll be reading chapters 3 until chapter 8. Chapter 3. Where is here? Jack opened his eyes. Sunlight slanted through the window. The treehouse was still high up in a tree, but it wasn't the same tree. Where are we? said Annie. She and Jack looked out the window. The pteranodon was soaring through the sky. The ground was covered with ferns and tall grass. There was a winding stream, a sloping hill, and volcanoes in the distance. I, I don't know where we are, said Jack. The pteranodon glided down to the base of the tree. It landed on the ground and stood very still. So what just happens to us, said Annie. Well, said Jack, I was looking at the picture in the book, and you said, wow, I wish we could go to the time of the pteranodons, said Annie. Yeah, and we saw the pteranodon in the Frog Creek Woods, said Jack. Yeah, and then the wind got loud, and the treehouse started spinning, said Annie. And we landed here, and we landed here. So that means... So that means what, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. He shook his head. None of this can be real. Annie looked out the window again. But he's real, she said. He's very real. Jack looked out the window with her again. The pteranodon was standing at the base of the tree like a guard. His giant wings were spread out on either side of him. Hi, Annie shouted. Shh, said Jack. We're not supposed to be here. But where is here? said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. Hi, who are you? Annie called to the pteranodon. The creature just looked up at her. Are you nuts? He can't talk, said Jack. But maybe the book can tell us. Jack looked down at the book. He read the words under the picture. This flying reptile lived in the Cretaceous period. It vanished 65 million years ago with the dinosaurs. That's impossible, said Jack. We can't have gone to a time 65 million years ago. Jack, said Annie. He's nice. Nice, said Jack. Yeah, I can tell, said Annie. Let's go down to him. Go down? Annie started down the rope ladder. Hey, come back, said Jack. But Annie kept going. Annie, wait. Annie dropped to the ground. She stepped boldly up to the ancient creature. The Pteranodon. Chapter 4. Henry. Jack gasped as Annie reached out her hand toward the Pteranodon. Oh no, he thought. Annie was always trying to make friends with animals, but this was going too far. Don't get too close to him, Annie, Jack shouted. Annie touched the Pteranodon's crest. She stroked his neck. She was talking to him. What in the world is she saying? Jack wondered. He took a deep breath. Okay, he would go down too. It would be good to examine a pteranodon. He could take notes like a scientist. Jack started down the rope ladder. When he reached the ground, he was only a few feet away from the creature. The pteranodon stared at Jack. His eyes were bright and alert. He's soft, Jack, said Annie. He feels like Henry. Jack snorted. <laughs> He's no dog, Annie. Feel him, Jack, said Annie. Jack didn't move. Don't think, Jack. Just do it, Annie said. Jack stepped forward. He reached out very cautiously. He brushed his hand down the creature's neck. Interesting, Jack thought. A thin layer of fuzz covered the pteranodon's skin. Soft, huh? said Annie. Jack reached into his backpack and pulled out a pencil and notebook. He wrote, Fuzzy Skin. What are you doing? asked Annie. Taking notes, said Jack. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live pteranodon. Jack looked at the pteranodon again. The bony crest at the top of his head was longer than Jack's arm. I wonder how smart he is, said Jack. 
Very smart, said Annie. Don't count on it, said Jack. His brain's probably no bigger than a bean. No, he's very smart. I can feel it, said Annie. I'm going to call him Henry. Jack wrote in his notebook. Small brain? Jack looked at the creature again. Maybe he's a mutant, he said. The Tronodon tilted his head. Annie laughed. He's no mutant, Jack. Well, what's he doing here then? Where is this place, said Jack. Annie leaned close to the Tronodon. Do you know where we are, Henry? She asked softly. The creature fixed his eyes on Annie. His long jaws were opening and closing like a giant pair of scissors. Are you trying to talk to me, Henry? Asked Annie. Forget it, Annie, Jack wrote in his notebook. Mouth like scissors. Did we come to a time long ago, Henry? Asked Annie. Is this a place from long ago? Suddenly, Annie gasped. <gasps> Jack! Jack looked up. Annie was pointing toward the hill. On top stood a huge dinosaur. Chapter 5. Gold in the Grass Go, go, said Jack. He threw his notebook into his pack. He pushed Annie towards the rope ladder. Bye, Henry, she said. Go, said Jack. He gave Annie another push. Quit it, she said, but she started up the ladder. Jack scrambled after her. Jack and Annie tumbled into the treehouse. They were panting as they were panting as they looked out the window at the dinosaur. It was standing on the hilltop, eating flowers off a tree. Oh man, whispered Jack. We are in a time long ago. The dinosaur looked into a hu looked like a huge rhinoceros with three horns instead of one. It had two long horns above its eyes, and another one grew out from its nose. It had a big shield-like thing behind its head. Triceratops, said Jack. Does he eat people? whispered Annie. I'll look it up. Jack grabbed the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. There, said Jack, pointing to a picture of a Triceratops. He read the caption. The Triceratops lived in the late Cretaceous period. This plant-eating dinosaur weighed over 12,000 pounds. Jack slammed the book shut. Just plants, no meat. Good, said Annie. Let's go see him up close. Are you crazy, said Jack? Don't you want to take notes about him? Asked Annie. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live Triceratops. Jack sighed. <sighs> Annie was right. Okay, let's go, he said. Jack shoved the dinosaur book into his backpack. He slung his pack over his shoulder. Annie started down the ladder, and Jack followed her. Just promise you won't pet him, Jack called down to Annie. I promise, said Annie. Promise you won't kiss him, said Jack. I promise, said Annie. Promise you won't talk to him. I promise, said Annie. Promise you won't. Don't worry, said Annie. Annie and Jack stepped off the ladder. The Pteranodon gave them a friendly look. Annie blew him a kiss. Be back soon, Henry, she called. Shh, said Jack. And he led the way slowly and carefully through the ferns. When Jack and Annie reached the bottom of the hill, they knelt behind a bush. Annie started to speak, but Jack quickly put his fingers to his lips. Then he and Annie peeked out at the Triceratops. The dinosaur was bigger than a truck. He was eating the flowers off a, off a magnolia tree. Jack slipped his notebook out of his pack. He wrote, eats flowers. Annie nudged him. Jack ignored her. He studied the Triceratops again. He wrote, eat slowly. Annie nudged him harder. Jack looked at her. Annie pointed to herself. She, she walked her fingers through the air. She pointed to the dinosaur. She smiled. Is she teasing? Jack wondered. Annie waved at Jack. Jack started to grab her. She laughed and jumped away. She fell into the grass in full view of the Triceratops. Get back, whispered Jack. Too late. The big dinosaur had spotted Annie. He gazed down at her from the hilltop. 
Half a magnolia flower was sticking out of his mouth. Oops, said Annie. Get back, Jack said again. He looks nice, Jack, Annie said. Nice? Watch out for his horns, Annie. The triceratops gazed calmly down at Annie. Then he turned and lopped down the side of the hill. Bye, said Annie. She turned back to Jack. See? Jack grunted, huh. But he wrote in his notebook. Nice. Come on, let's look around some more, said Annie. There's the Triceratops. And there's Jack and Annie. As Jack started after Annie, he saw something glittering in the tall grass. Jack reached it down and picked it up. It was a gold medallion. A letter was engraved on the medallion, a fancy M. Oh man, someone was here before us, Jack said softly. Chapter 6, Dinosaur Valley Annie, look at this, Jack called. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the hilltop. She was picking a flower from the magnolia tree. Annie, look, a medallion, shouted Jack. But Annie wasn't paying attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the other side of the hill. Oh, wow, she said, clutching her magnolia flower. She took off down the hill. Annie, come back, Chuck shouted. But Annie had disappeared. Oh, brother, Jack muttered. He stuffed the gold medallion into his jean pocket. Then Jack heard Annie shriek. Ah! Annie, he said. Jack heard another sound as well. A deep bellowing sound, like a tuba. Jack, come here, quick, Annie called. Jack raced up the hill. When he got to the top, he gasped. <gasps> the valley below was filled with nests. Big nests made out of mud. The nests were filled with tiny dinosaurs. Annie was crouching next to one of the nests. Towering over her was a gigantic duck-billed dinosaur. Don't panic. Don't move, said Jack. He stepped slowly down the hill towards Annie. The huge dinosaur was waving her arms and making her tupa sound. Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He knelt on the ground. Okay, move towards me, slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand, crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled towards Jack. Still bellowing, the duck-billed dinosaur followed her. Annie froze. Keep going, Jack said. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched farther down the hill until he was just an arm's distance from Annie. He reached out and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down, Jack said. He crouched next to her. Bow your head. Pretend to chew. Chew? said Annie. Yes, said Jack. I read that's what you do if a mean dog comes at you. She's no dog, Jack, said Annie. Just chew, said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed their heads and pretended to chew. Soon the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack looked up. I don't think she's mad anymore, he said. You saved me, said Annie. Thanks. You have to use your brain, Annie, said Jack. You can't just go running to a nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. Annie stood up. Annie, don't, said Jack. Too late. Annie held out her magnolia flower to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worry about your babies, she said. The dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flower from her hand. She reached for another. No more, said Annie. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. But there were more flowers up there, Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I'll get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. The dinosaur waddled after her. Just quickly, sorry, Jack quickly looked at the dinosaur babies. Some were crawling out of their nests. Where are the other mothers? Jack wondered. 
Jack took out the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. He found a picture of some duck-billed dinosaurs. He read the caption. The Anatosauruses lived in colonies. While a few mothers babysat the nests, others looked for food. So there were probably more mothers close by looking for food. Hey, Jack, Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding magnolia flowers to the giant Anatosaurus. Guess what, said Annie. She's nice, too. Suddenly, the Anatosaurus made her terrible tuba sound. Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur charged down the hill. She seemed afraid of something. Jack put the book on top of his pack. He hurried to Annie. I wonder why she ran away, said Annie. We were starting to be friends. Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance almost made him faint. An enormous monster was coming across the plain. And here's the duck-billed dinosaur running away, the Anatosaurus. And the flowers Annie was giving him, her. The monster was walking on two strong legs. It was swinging a long, thick tail and dangling two tiny arms. It had a huge head, and its jaws were wide open. Even, f even from far away, Jack could see its long, gleaming teeth. Tyrannosaurus Rex, whispered Jack. Okay. And that's the middle part of Dinosaurs Before Dark. I'll read the last part, and I will upload it soon. Anyways... I hope you're enjoying the book as much as I am. I'll see you next time.